Awo Shalom Rastafari. This is going to be the um, Sabbath reasoning, the Torah portion, the Rastafari sabbatical study for the 25th um, Torah portion, which is known in the Hebrew as Av or Tzaw. Tzawa. That actually means to command. And Tzaw, or in modern Hebrew, Av means command. And it's based on the key Torah portion in this week's um, reading and feeding, which is the second in the book of Leviticus. The second in the book of Leviticus, also known in the Hebrew as Vayikra, Vayikra, and in the royal Amharic of the Met of Kedus of Kedemawi Haile Selassie's Bible as the Orit Ze Lewawian, or the Torah of the Levites. Now, as we've been discussing so far, we've just begun this particular book, um, which is the which is Leviticus, and this right here is what we're going to be um, using as a basic intro. This is a basic intro to the Torah portion. So far we have three of the five Torah portions now available. So if you want to get a copy of that, um, go to our website, the book section, www.lojsociety.org, and join up with I and I Rastafari Book Club. But Let's get into this because this is leading up to leading up to the to the Fasica or Pesach, which in the Old Testament is known as Passover. Now we know based on the New Testament that Christos Fasikachin Lenya Tardualana, in other words, that Christ our Passover, that the Moshiach our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua, Joshua, the Moshiach, he is our Passover. So how do we celebrate? And the question is, will you this year, 2012, celebrate the, the Master's Supper, the, the Adoni's Evening Meal, also known as the so-called Last Supper or Christ's Supper? which is what we commemorate and celebrate, and we do this in remembrance of him. But now what I would like to do in this Torah portion is to connect the Torah portion, which um, the law is our schoolmaster, the word says, until Christ become, until the Moshiach, until we grow up to him in all things. So it's very important for all true Christians and all who seek Christ or seek God in Christ to recognize the importance of the law of Moses, of the Psalms of David, of the prophet, because all of these speak of the Moshiach, and they help to give us a clear and a an accurate knowledge of the Savior and of our way of life in spirit and in truth. So let's get into this right here and lay down some of the basics. So this is the 25th. So let's write this up here. Um, the RSS, Rastafari Sabbatical Study, number 25. Now in the Hebrew, and we're going from the Hebrew to the Royal Amharic. You understand? We're going from the Hebrew to the Royal Amharic, and it's known as Tzav. Right or Tzal. So this is the the Tsa, and this is the We. Let's get this right here, right? Or T some Z A V, but that V can be really is more correctly a W. Now Balmorenya in the Amharic is known as if you look at the list, it's known as I Z. Zacho, right? It's known as I Zazacho. I Zazacho, which means command them. 
Now the Hebrew says um Tsao or Tsav uh et uh, ha aron uh I think ve et ha ha um uh banim ban banaim banayu right and it was command Aaron and his son. So let's go to the Torah portion first. So let's give an overview. This is Sav, Tsao, Zav. Some says, or some say Sav, but it's a Sa. And we went over the Hebrew, our mother tongue, so we can get the correct understanding by learning the. In order to understand the 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 message, we have to understand the words, and to best understand the words, we have to understand the letters. You see, the key is where the letters. So there's there's a deeper meaning in this, but this is going to be a basic teaching because we want to connect this particular season, for example, this Sunday. And this is the Sunday that the first day we're recording this on, or in the more towards the evening, going into actually the so-called Monday, but Sunday. But, you know, the whole date and calculation of time in the West is really backward according to our Hebraic and according to Jah's law and Jah's word. So that's another aspect that we need to properly tell time, Jah's way or Yah's way. You understand because we're living in a world of confusion that keeps us as purposely set up by the God of this world, you understand, who is not the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And uh, second, I think Corinthians uh, 4 and 4, we went through that, goes into that in a little bit more detail. Now, the Hebrew for command in the Hebrew is the sixth word and the first distinctive word in this portion, in the Parsha. This is the 25th weekly Torah portion in the annual uh, Judaic cycle of the Torah reading, so we know as the Orit Min Bab. And it's the second in the book of Leviticus. It constitutes Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1. To Leviticus chapter 8 verse 36. Now we as Hebrews or Hebrews in the diaspora, we read it in either the 25th or the 24th or the 25th Shabbat or the Senbet after the Simchat Torah or the Fisha uh, Leorit, which is the joy of the Torah or the joy of Jah's law, generally in March or early April. And this is this is the time right now. Now, this particular portion, it teaches us how the priests performed the sacrifices, and it describes the ordination of Aaron, of Aaron and his sons. Now, see, this is very important for us because it lays a basic foundation so we can understand the fulfillment in the Moshia, the fulfillment in our black Lord and Savior, Adoni Yeshua. So we can understand Geta Yesus Christos' work and therefore the true faith of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, we spoke in the in a previous vid, um, we had segued into uh, Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter seven to speak about the Levitical priesthood, right? And then the Levitical priesthood has been done away with, but there's a new priesthood, and that comes in through our Lord, that comes in through the, the, the tribe of Judah, which our Lord sprang from. And the King of Kings now verifies and vouchsafes that being the King of Kings, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the elect of God. So now we have both the scriptural and we have the, 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 the revelation, you understand, in real time, you understand. The only conquering line of the tribe of Judah is Hylas Elasi the first. So this is also another aspect of Rastafari revelation. But now what these teachings actually teach us as that new priesthood, after the order of Melchizedek, Edek, what it teaches us is the principles. Because remember, even though there's a new priesthood, through Judah, Yehuda, and not through Levi or Levi, due to the sacrifice and fulfillment of the Moshiach, still the scriptures teach us that it's according to the pattern, 
in other words, according to the example of Levi. This is another reason why this particular book, Leviticus, is important. Now, there's a couple of elements we want to deal with. So there's two parts to this. One is the sacrifices, and secondly is the ordination. So one is the sacrifices, and the second aspect is the ordination. Now, to get an overview of the sacrifices, it says that Jah told Moses to command Aaron and the priests about the rituals of the sacrifices or the korbanot, the korban, the, the, the korbanot in the Hebrew, the korban. It's Leviticus 6 and 1. Now, as we break this down, there were five different types of offerings. Now, in true Christina, in true Christianity, in true teachings of Christ, our black Lord and Savior, he fulfills all five types, you see. But now, do you comprehend that? Do you understand that? This is one of the reasons why we point to the, the, Schofield, the Schofield Study Bible as another companion and a study text, because when we go to Leviticus here, and hopefully... Either you have a hard copy of the Schofield uh, Study Bible or you've downloaded it. And if you download it, you can study um, that way. There's some notes here that really go point for point and explain with verses, with scriptures, the New Testament and the Old Testament. So if you just read the Old Testament without the Moshiach, it's like Hawari Apollos, Paul said, you're reading with a veil over your eyes. But the veil now is lifted, you understand, in Yehoshua, in Jesus Christos. The veil is lifted in Christ. So it all makes sense that the law is our schoolmaster. That real Bible studies is studying Torah, studying the Old Testament, and seeing how Yeshua, how Jesus Christos fulfills that. You understand? So in the Old Testament, there was the animal sacrificial ritual, the sacrificial rites. Now, all this was fulfilled in Christ's sacrifice. You understand? In Christ's sacrifice. And we're seeking to publish a, 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 a new compilation of selected essays. Um, speaking of Christ's sacrifice and the connection with the with, with the kana the kana balsam or the cannabis and it's a very very Ina is not the original author of this. However, we want to share this with you. And what we probably will do is 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 upload some of these documents PDF form so ones can get a basic reading of it. And I think it explains something significant, both about the 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 kana balsam and what Jesus Christo said when he says that. He will not drink of, 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 of this until he drinks of it anew in the kingdom. Now, we recognize Christ and his kingly character. We recognize the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ and the revelation of Rastafari, where we say the lamb's bread is the Anabosa. Now, how this really connects, we're going to get into John Willing, but we need to first lay a basic foundation to see how the old types, what does the old types really represent? You understand? What does these old types really represent? What does the bullock represent? What does the goat represent? What does the, the sheep or the lamb, the turtle dove, you understand? What do these grades of typical sacrifice, they test the measure of our apprehension of the varied aspects of Christos's one sacrifice. So these various um, animal sacrifices, you know, saying that were practiced, you know, saying in Old Testament times. Let's just make no mistake about. It. Let's make this clear. We are studying this, but not like the so-called foolish Jews. You know, saying, and the foolish Jews are those who reject the Moshiach. You know what I'm saying? And, and do not understand, and they may be well-meaning, but they're well-meaning wrong because they're not seeing the fulfillment in Yehoshua. And what's very interesting is even by studying the, the notes that we have compiled here from um, Wiki and, and some other places, we saw a couple of the interesting notes that we want to put right out there. 
first of all, we're, we're going to go to the classical so-called rabbinic interpretation, right? Now, this is a strictly, we could say, a Judaic approach to the Torah portion that we're reading. Now, we understand it messianically or from an Ethiopian, Hebrew, um, Judeo-Christian perspective, you know what I'm saying, which is the fullness, the Old and the New Testament as one. But now, here's the classic rabbinic interpretation, Old Testament only. Check this out right here. There was a, a, a rabbi, one um, Simeon. Well, first of all, let's get into this. It's Leviticus chapter 6. There's a tractate known as Zevakim in the Mishnah, the, the Tosefta, and the Talmud that interpreted the law of animal sacrifices in Leviticus chapter 6 to 7, right? And a one, a uh, Rebbe uh, Simeon. Simeon, he taught that, generally speaking, the Torah or the law, let's remember that when it's speaking about the Torah, chiefly it's speaking about the law overall. You understand? The entire volume, in other words. So the, the, the Torah required a burnt offering only as expiation for sinful meditation of the heart. This is interesting. So remember the key word in Leviticus is, 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 is if and voluntary. These are some of the key words. If, it was not commanded to them to do so, but if, you understand, if they were willful, you understand, to, you know, to, to they, they, they felt a sinful meditation or thought. And what's, what's kind of key here is when you get to, if you, if you read Leviticus, and hopefully you have to spend the time just to go over it, basically you find something interesting. Because here we're speaking about the trespass offering and, and the restitution. You know what I'm saying? Trespass offering, and trespass means to go beyond what is lawful, to go beyond what is right. And it says, see the law of this offering, Leviticus chapter 7, verses 1 to 7, which is the next chapter, right? But here's how the verse reads in King James. Verse 1, it says, and the Lord, and yod Hey wow Hey or Yahweh, spake to Musa or Moshe, saying, if a soul sin, listen, if a soul sin and commit a trespass against Yahweh and lie to his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep, let somebody give you something to keep, or in fellowship. Now, we've been speaking about fellowship, which is the key word for building the true brotherhood of Rastafari, or in a thing taken away by violence. Somebody evict you, snatch something, took it by force, or have deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost, and lieth concerning it, and sweareth falsely. In any of, in any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein. So this is key. It is saying that if one has done any of these things, one is sinning. You understand, lying to their neighbor, you understand, that which was delivered to him to keep, or lying in fellowship, you understand, who's your brother, you understand, or in a thing taken away by violence, or have to seize his neighbor, you understand, his, his bread companion, or have found that which was lost and lieth. It's interesting because the brethren, um, I was reading with one particular uh, brethren, and we got on that subject matter about about lying, he says that there was a brother that asked him, you know, or, or mentioned to him that um, he really want to, like, kind of get right with Jah. He want to get right with God. And the inspiration came for him to say to the brother, like, you got to stop lying. You know, you know, you got to cut out lying. You got to look at, look at the, 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 the lying nature. If you want to get right with God, and God is the truth. You know what I'm saying? He's the God of truth. But to, you have to first have a love of the truth. That means you have to deal with the lies. You understand? You have to deal with the lies first and foremost. And see, that's something that's in anyone who is willing. That's in their power. Now, notice where this particular Torah portion known as uh, Tav, which is, which is command. Now, the key word command actually comes up in the, I think, in the, 
in the what is the sixth or the well actually the 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 the, the ninth verse the ninth verse this is like the kind of the foreword right then it shall be because he has sinned he has sinned why because he lied he he swore falsely you know saying he told he told his neighbor he told his brethren you understand? It says, I and I is lying to one another. Imagine living in a community full of liars. I mean, we're already living in Babylon, but, but think about which will be brethren, you understand, and sister and family, and you have these sort of behaviors going on. Don't you think that is a sin that's falling short of the glory of God? Because it's not the truth. So if it's not the truth, then it's falling short of the glory of Jah. And notice, the particular emphasis is not... Well, Israel, if you're dealing with some Gentile, some heathen, but charity begins at home and then spreads abroad. So this is for how I and I come together. So there's very useful instructions here in building, you understand, know in building this Rastafari family, in building this Rastafari community at, at, at home and abroad. You understand? And we start individually. We start looking the... The Torah, the word is like a mirror. You know what I'm saying? So when we're reading, it's not looking at, yeah, that guy's like that over there. Yeah, he, yeah, he be doing that too. But we're looking and saying, have I done this? You know what I'm saying? And if you find that you have, don't make no excuse. That's like, Chan, that is wrong. So if it says, if you've done such and such, you're worthy of death, you know, that, that will give you, as they say, a new attitude. You know what I'm saying? Because this is, this is a spirituality, true Rastafari. The religion part, yeah, there's rules and regulations, so forth and so on, which are intended to help ones. But if you really want to be helped, you have to deal with it in spirit and in truth. You know what I'm saying? Not in materials and lies. So here is separating from them that, that, that nature, bringing that nature to their own reflection. Now, seeing that this right here actually connects so intimately with the next Shabbat coming up, and the next Shabbat coming up, the the eve of the six is beginning the is 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 the Passover Fasika, or what we call um, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's evening meal. You understand Adoni's evening meal, you know. And this is also what we want to help to remind ones and ones of. You understand, and and we hope that we're not all together in one place. But wherever we're at, if we have an opportunity, we should remember, you understand, remember Christos' sacrifice, Christ's sacrifice, Christ and his kingly character, and we should observe that, that supper, you understand, whether one or two or however many are willing. But first, let's deal with this basic foundation right here, because this is what came before, and now Christ fulfills this. But at the same time, when you read the, in, um, what is it, Corinthians, and it talks about um, the Lord's uh, Supper, you understand, I think, Corinthians chapter 11, and it says that one should discern, discern the body of the Lord, you understand, and anyone who, who, who doesn't, you understand, or acts falsely, this is, this is what's interesting, you understand, is actually guilty you understand, know is guilty of the body and the blood. Now, now, what we've done is connecting the Old Testament with the New Testament because our faith says that, that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Christ because he fulfilled the Old Testament types and, and similes concerning, right, concerning, concerning the Messiah. And when we say the foolish Jews, you know what I'm saying? We're saying those Jews or Judaics that for whatever reason reject the verity of that. Because the least they can do is check it out for themselves. And there's been many Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? Um, and many uh, Judaics, whether our black Hebrews, Ethiopians, whether even Europeans who are Jewish and grew up on this, who really started to study it and, and check it out for themselves and found out the truth about Yeshua. You understand? And many are beginning to find out the truth about his humanity, that he is black, you understand? which is a very, very important part of the story, not for boasting, but for the reality of the matter. 
You know what I'm saying? Let's just deal with the reality of the matter because he's black, does not exempt us as black folks, but actually puts more um, divine responsibility upon us. Now, here's the part where we're talking about where the order and the meaning of the Lord's table, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It, here's what Hawaii Apollo says. For I have received Kabbalah, Kabbalah of Adoni, that which also I delivered to you, that Adoni Yeshua, Geta Jesus, or Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, or this do, in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now, th those two parts were direct quotes. Now, here, Hawaii Apollos is going to give us his first century Judaic overstanding of this. And when we study the Torah, we can actually see, you understand, what Hawari Apollos and other Hebrews, like even the Ethiopian eunuch, what they saw and why they received Yehoshua, Yeshua, Joshua as the Moshiach. It says here, for as often as ye eat this bread, so though this particular um, 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 annual or yearly remembrance for, for, for Fasica, Passover, is, is commemorative and is special in the light of Christ, because that's the same time, this is the same time in which he was uh, crucified, you understand? And it's interesting because this is Palm Sunday. And if you study the symbology of the palms, going all the way back to the ancient hieroglyphic root types and root meanings, the palm connects with a time of commencement, with, 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 with even a celestial crossing. You understand? The, the, the palms is an interesting symbology in itself, and, and it deserves more study. You understand? Just on the palms. Make a note of it, and John willing, we can go through it, or some references we can give to ones that they can look up more significance um, to the palms to really understand, to get an overstanding of why the palms are important, not just symbolically, you understand, not just at that kindergarten level of Christianity, but really at that high school and, 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 and university, the universal application of it. So recognize it on its various levels to get the full receptivity. You know what I'm saying? Because to each of us, according to as we receive, if we receive the Moshiach a little bit, you know what I'm saying, then we can get a little reward. If we have a little bit of knowledge, then we can only do the work according to that little bit of knowledge or faith that we have. But if we grow in our faith, if we grow in our knowledge, you know what I'm saying, and in our fellowship, then more we can do to fulfill his will, and be blessed. So, Hawaii of Paulos, he says this, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord Adoni's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of Adoni, of the Master, our black Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Adoni. But let a man what examine himself, verse 28. So the, the, the fasica, more than just the matzah and the wine and the wine or even the lamb's bread and the cannabis, is more about, see the key word, examine himself. Let each, let, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So it's not just about eating. It's not just a feast. It's not just like a, a, a kind of a free-for-all, a, a buffet or something like that. No, we are taking the, the symbolic 
You know what I'm saying? The, we're making a symbolic covenant. You know what I'm saying? And there's a spiritual application to it. So it's not just, like I said, it's not just, uh, you know, just eating it or just done casually or whatever. This is one of the reasons why, even though it says as often as you do it, you understand? Some interpret you can do it as many times as you like, eat the bread and, and, the, and the wine. And true, that's a communion. We know the bread and the wine, that was, that was what, 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 what Malkaz Edek brought forward to Abraham. You understand when he blessed him, so we can recognize even before the Torah that there was already an ancient significance to these particular elements that shows the universality of these elements. So this is why it's non-partial to whatever race or or or, or nationality or tribe. You understand? Know as long as they approach it in spirit and in truth. You understand? So what Christ did for us and does for us spiritually, you understand, and in truth, and to recognize his true humanity. You know, this is why the point about his Ethiopianness is important, not for boasting or bragging rights, but because it is the truth. And being the truth and proven to be the truth is a test for those who say it does not matter. Well, if it does not matter, you understand, then why is it avoided? And why do so many, so many fight against it unless they have an, another agenda other than the truth of Christ? We should all be about learning the truth of the Moshiach. You understand? And, and not if he happens, but because he happens to be black and Ethiopian is so very significant to this whole world and global situation because that is the truth that is denied. You understand? And this is also one of the reasons why Christianity, you understand, has in a sense lost its spiritual power because of that same truth. Remember the portion right here in um, Leviticus? It says, it says, if a soul sin, and say if a person sin so much or if a body sin or if a spirit sin, but it says if a soul, if a if if, if the psychology, the suke sin and commit a trespass against Yahweh and lie to his neighbor. So lying to our neighbor. And see, we need to understand the neighbor is not talking about what well, we are Israel and those are Edomites over there. No. Is speaking about we are Israel, and amongst us as Israel and Ethiopian Hebrews, us lying one to another. We say that Christ is our brother, he's our savior, he's our elder brother, he's our big brother, our big black brother, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of his father, our father, and we are family, not under law, but in law. So what we're doing, lying to one another. See, that's a sin against Yahweh. You know, that's a sin against Jah, right? And then it goes on to say, lie to his neighbor and that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, how brothers are dealing with brothers, or in a thing taken away by violence, or have deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost and lieth concerning it. You found something that was lost, but because you covet it, you lie about it. So you see, all of these, all of these, even offerings are because the ten words, what's known as the ten commandments, but the ten words of his command, which they said that whatever Moses say, we will hear and we will do, we will obey. But then they turned around and 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 went back to the so-called um, um, false worship, you know, saying, or the cast out worship of the golden calf of idolatry, you understand, of, 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 of the parties. They were having a party down there. You know, remember when Joshua was like, it's the sound of war in the camp. And what the, uh, Moses said, no, nah, that's, that's music, man. They're having a party. You understand, they're doing some contemptible Gadspell music and trying to call it, quote, holy moly music. They, 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 they're doing their own form of praise and worship music, but that's not what I commanded them, what they're doing. You know, they, they're dealing with idolatry. They have gone backward and not forward. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, Leviticus now comes in as a stopgap measure, 
You know, and to keep this seed, this 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 particular seed, and we can say a particular black seed, till the Moshia would come. Because see, even the enemy Satan knew that the Moshia would be born through this line. And what we can see with Israel's troubles, you understand, know, biblical Israel and the Hebrews' troubles and even being led willy-nilly by the Gentiles and other desires and so forth and so on and false gods and everything else, it was to keep them away from that fulfillment. So we can see that the law of sacrifices actually and indeed is that law that Christ's sacrifice abolished, not his pure will, not the commands, because otherwise it would make no sense when it says in Revelation, these are they who keep the commands of God and the testimony of Jesus Christos. No, it was the law of sacrifice because Hebrews tell us that Leviticus, the Levitical order, you understand, had, had gotten played out. The Levitical order, done. A new order, and it's evident, you understand, that our Adoni, our master, sprung from the tribe of Judah and hence the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. And now here's where we get the whole um, Melchizedekian or Melchizedek you understand, connection concerning the king of kings, Haile Selassie, based on the scriptures, based on the Bible. You understand? That's the root of what we may call um, the moral theocracy. You understand? The moral theocracy of his majesty. And that moral theocracy is now seeking to fulfill what Yahweh had desired of Israel from the very beginning, a nation of the priesthood. And when we turn to Revelation, the first chapter of Revelation, we can see that now there's a kingdom of the priesthood. You know what I'm saying? Now the question is, are we and when will we, you know what I'm saying, in spirit and in truth be worthy you understand, of such an ordination. In other words, when will we, in other words, the, 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 the law, you understand, the law, what, what does it say? In, um, it says that the law is our schoolmaster. You understand, the law is our schoolmaster until Christ, until the true Christ consciousness has come. That means until we are living Jesus. You understand? We are living his spirit in our, in, in, in our lives. You, I don't know if you understand. Perhaps you do understand what I'm saying. Or some might understand, but John Willen will have more opportunity and the Holy Spirit will show you what our lack of eloquence might have not been able to express. But here it basically says, Oh, I have found that which was lost in life concerning it, and sweareth falsely. And any of these that a man doeth, sinning therein, then it shall be, verse 4, because he hath sinned and is guilty. Look at that. So the lie, the swearing falsely, the deceiving, is all guilt. That he shall restore that which he took violently away. This is to my restitution, that which was violently taken away, he shall restore. Or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found. And he, he found the lost thing and claimed, like, you know, that finders, keepers, losers, weepers, that's, that, that, is, that is Satan's nursery rhyme. That's not, that's not of job. Or, verse 5, all that about which he hath sworn falsely. He shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more thereto, some say 20%, and give it to him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. So he had to do restitution to the one you understand who he stole or took something from, give a 20% or a fifth part, as well as the trespass offering. You understand the trespass offering, verse 6, it says, And he shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh, a ram without blemish of the flock, with thy estimation, for a treasure 
a trespass for a trespass offering to the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before Yahweh, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he hath done in trespassing therein. Now, this might sound, people might focus on the animal, the animal, the animal sacrifice part of it, right? But then let's understand this. In that time, you understand, it was permissible. You understand? In this time, you understand, it is not. And this is not to um, blow any kisses at PETA, the PETA organization, but in, in a sense, they have the right idea, even if it's somewhat um, Gentile in its leanings, it is still the right idea because in the fullness of it, it's fulfilling the will of Christ. You understand? It's fulfilling the will of God in Christ. So right here, getting back to this uh, classic rabbinic interpretation, it says that um, a midrash, it taught that if people repent, get this, Listen to this. This is, this is a strictly Jewish, non-New Testament, non-Christ reading of this particular section of Scripture. And we already know that it connects with Christ's sacrifice, right? It says a midrash, a, a study we can say, taught or dursan, that if people repent, it is accounted as if they had gone up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, built the temple, and the altars, and offered all the sacrifices ordained in the Torah. That's how great. So even the, the Hebrew um, and the sages and the rabbis, in, in, in studying Torah, they recognize the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ. They recognize the spirit of Christ, though they may not have identified it as the Moshiach, but when, when we read this right here, that if people repent, it is accounted as if they had done all the other rites and rituals. So we learn that these rites and rituals, at best, they were meant to be teachable moments. You understand? Know as well as recognizing that the animals and the livestock was like part of the people's wealth. When they gave a uh, uh, animal for such sacrifice, they were really getting no real enjoyment out of it. In other words, it wasn't like slaying the animal and having a barbecue or something like that. You know, was, um, in Baal worship, that's where you get the barbecue from. So think about that next time you're at one of those cookouts. Where did it really come from? You understand? It's the sacrifices of the high places. But then another... Um, Aha, Rabbi Aha and Hanina ben Papa, right, according to them, he said, or they said, one said in the name of another one, that God, Ha Shem, the name, accounts studying the sacrifices, get this, studying the sacrifices as equal to offering them. So we're looking here at an Old Testament, just looking apart from Christ, in other words, the Moshiach, the New Testament, studying the Old Testament from, we could say, the classic rabbinic interpretations, we find that even these rabbis, in studying the word, they recognize that Jah accounts studying, just studying about the sacrifices as equal to offering them. So even they were becoming conscious of the fact that the sacrifices was not the end-all and be-all. But now when we study Hebrews, you understand, the book of Hebrews really, really comes to the root and the crux of this particular, of this particular matter. Now, there was, another, um, there was another area here, too, and that was on page 65 for those who might have a copy of the Vayikra. Moving to page 73, it says right here that there was um, two uh, Rebbe's, one Phineas and one Lewi. And, well, actually three, and Yonatan, or Yonan, and they had said in the name of another Rebbe, um, Menachem of Galia, that in the time to come, now let's get this, in the time to come, all sacrifices will be annulled. But the thanksgiving sacrifice, 
the misgana sacrifice or the misgana mes uh, mes uh, wa it you know saying or mes wa it of Leviticus seven and twelve will not be annulled will not be done away with and all prayers will be annulled but the misgana the thanksgiving modim prayer will not be annulled. Now, in just scanning over this and, and, you know, in studying the preparation to kind of bring this this teaching, this particular 25th uh, sabbatical of Bamarinya is a forward as we prepare and look forward to um, Adoni's evening meal, you understand, or what's known as the Last Supper or Fasika Pesach coming up um by the next Shabbat, the eve of, of the Friday, actually, I think it's the 6th, the eve of the 6th to the 13th, and this includes Passover and the seven days of the unleavened, the unleavened bread. So this is, that's what next Saturday would not be a regular Torah portion, but would instead be the Passover, you understand, it would be the Passover. And we are seeking to, since Christ, Christos, the Moshiach, is Fasikachin. He is our Passover. We are going to do what our Master has ordained us. And he's also ordained for us to study the law of Moses and the Psalms of David and the prophets. And he said that we will find those things written there concerning him, you understand? So we get to recognize the importance of Christos, the importance of Jesus Christos in in this uh, systemic anomaly, so to speak. Um, but now, these are just a, a couple of quotes from right here that we thought were were very telling and very interesting. And um, I think it's best for ones to really, you know, get a firsthand study of some of these things such as some of the sacrifices, go over them, because there's a lot of different verses, you understand, that are in Leviticus, um, in the beginning of the chapter. We touched on some of them in some of the previous vids, but we still do not touch on the fire as a symbol of Jah's holiness, the sweet savor offerings, the meal, the meal offerings, or one can call it the, um, the, the vegan, you know, the vegetarian, in that sense, offering because there was no no animal, no animal, no debtors in that. The use of the use of honey, the use of um, you know, the use of the, you know, the use of the peace, you know, the peace offerings, you know, and the sin offerings. So these are matters that one um, would would and should get into. You understand? Get into a little bit more in detail.